You thought we were done with Piranha, huh? Well, I wish we were that lucky. But this movie's listed on the Piranha series wiki page, so let's take a look at this mockbuster based off the 2010 Piranha and see if it's worth watching. Short answer is no, it's not. But here's a quick rundown. Mega Piranha takes place on the Orinoco River in Venezuela. Some high up politicians are on a boat and they get attacked and killed by some piranhas. This triggers the US government and the Venezuelan government into action, both blaming each other for the attack, not knowing it was the killer fish. The Secretary of State calls in Jason Fitch to investigate the killings. In Venezuela, he meets Sarah and a team of local researchers. They created the piranhas in a lab and somehow they escaped. And now the fish are doubling in size every 36 hours. Fitch, along with Colonel Diaz of the Venezuelan government, don't believe him and he has to see it for himself. And sure enough, the piranhas attack him. He's able to kill one of them and all the others swarm around it eating the dead fish. This gives him just enough time to get out of the water where one still jumps out and tries to get him. He kills it, and now he has his evidence. Fitch shows the piranha to Diaz and gives him the coordinates to where they are. I looked it up, and I do have to give this movie credit. The coordinates are on the Orinoco River, so at least there's that. Fitch shows the fish to the lab, and they all agree the only way to kill them is to pour concrete to dam up the river and then drain it, suffocating the fish. Diaz has other plans though. He goes in hot with all the firepower he can and blows them out of the water. It seems like, for the most part, Diaz's plan worked, and there are tons of piranhas that are dead. But we're only a half hour into this movie. There's a lot left to go. There's a lot of back and forth between the two governments. Venezuela blames the US lab, which, I mean, they're right, it is their fault, but it doesn't really matter because they didn't kill all the fish. A boat sinks in the river, and they know there are more piranha out there. It seems like the fish have grown, because they're jumping out of the river and exploding into houses kamikaze style. The scientists are able to tell, somehow, that the fish are heading toward the ocean. Their leader is killed like Samuel Jackson from Deep Blue Sea. Fitch and Sarah escape the city to the ocean, but the Venezuelans are hot on their tails. Fitch tells the secretary they need to bomb where the river meets the ocean. He gets to the spot and confirms that the fish are there, so he calls in the attack, but the battery goes dead. So he does something I've never heard of. Putting a dead battery in your mouth will give you 10 seconds of charge. What? Okay, no, don't do this, kids. Don't go around thinking you're going to recharge your batteries by putting them in your mouth. Anyway, it works in this movie, and he's able to make the call. They blast at the fish, and again, more are killed, but the strongest survive. They take down the battleship, and Finch's team are left with only one option, nuking them before they reach Florida. The sub launches the nukes and hits the fish head on, but it only stuns them. So even nukes can't penetrate the fish. This makes Fitch come up with another plan. He remembers back in the river when he dived down and killed one of them. The others all attacked it. So he plans on going down there with a team and killing just one of them, hoping all the others will go into a feeding frenzy and kill each other. The divers jump in and start shooting at the piranha but it's not working. They try to shoot at the gills, but nothing can make it through. Sarah tells him the only way to kill one is to shoot a bomb into their mouth. Around this time, the Venezuelan government comes by and shoots all the other choppers out of the sky. Fitch boards the helicopter and quickly takes them out, throwing a special speaker that emits a sound that the piranhas understand as food is over here. Fitch jumps out just in time as a piranha jumps up and eats the helicopter. Now that they're out of the way, they can focus on the killer fish. Fitch corners one into a reef and fires the bomb. It kills the fish 
and all the others come in for an easy meal. It seems like their plan worked, and the fish start eating each other. But I don't really get it. Best case scenario, there's still going to be at least one fish that survives, because you can't eat yourself. Maybe they're hoping it'll just swim away. Finally, Finch gets with Sarah and blah blah blah, the end. But that's Mega Piranha. Where to start? First off, I wasn't expecting much, and somehow, it still came in under expectations. It has a lot of fast editing in the beginning that kind of made me sick. And that's what you want a movie to do, make you throw up. I thought maybe they would do some funny scenes to make it an intentional bad movie, but no, it's just a bad movie all around. I will say, it looks really good. Well, the scenes that didn't have CGI in them. And it picks up a little at the end. Don't watch this. It's not worth your time. I give Mega Piranha one Kamikaze Piranha out of four. Is that mujer? Uh, uh, she's a diplomat Americana. We import her to the case. Okay, follow. That was smooth. It's a professional school.